you know, you've got over a billion transistors on a single chip, might generate 150 watts of heat. And it's basically, if you can't get that heat out, then you have to run the chip slower. Electronic devices must be kept cool in order to be reliable and deliver their highest performance. Conventional fan plus finned heat sink heat exchangers have many disadvantages. They're noisy, they can be expensive and large, they're prone to dust and debris buildup, and they're simply inefficient. Researchers at Sandia National Laboratories have developed the Sandia Cooler, novel heat transfer technology based on an impeller design. This new compact rugged architecture allows for vastly improved efficiency and it's quiet and resists dust fouling. The bottleneck to heat transfer is a thin invisible layer of stagnant air that collects around these fins. Anytime you have fluid flow moving past a body, you have what's called a boundary layer, this dead air that just sits there kind of like an insulating blanket. The original intent was to exploit a fairly obscure fluid dynamic effect that I first saw uh, in the literature, as far as I can tell, it was first discussed in the 1950s. And that is that when you have an object spinning rapidly or more generally accelerating, the boundary layer surrounding that object thins. And the good news is, is that at 2,000 RPM, the effect is big. It's about a factor of 10. Now, all of this is predicated on the notion that you can somehow relay the heat from a stationary frame of reference like a CPU to something spinning at 2000 RPM, where there was initially a lot of skepticism about whether this would even be possible. And the structure that I proposed for relaying the heat is something called an air bearing. Now, the other key insight is really simple, which is you can imagine that a structure like this rotating at 2000 RPMs doesn't collect much dust because a dust particle, when it lands on it, it just gets flung off. And it's really that simple. When we turn on the motor to spin this, very quickly, within a couple seconds, you'll see that, that you'll hear this thing lift off and separate, and it becomes self-supporting. So that's called a hydrodynamic air bearing, and it's very analogous to hydroplaning in your car. Um, in this case, though, we're, we're, we're doing it intentionally. Um, and uh, a very small amount of the power output by the motor gets consumed in providing this lift. It's a very efficient process. When this spins, it draws air down into this sort of eye region, and then the air is ejected forcefully in the radial direction through all these fins. That gives you your cooling effect. It's three pieces, and it seems, you know, very simple once it is all put together and works, but, but there are a lot of deep technical challenges to, to, um, to optimize the impeller design, to optimize the design of the hydrodynamic air bearing. Another important feature of the cooler is low noise operation. In this prototype demonstration, noise is being emitted by a brushless motor without a cover, sound that would be inaudible in a finished product. Now to show you what the intrinsic noise of the device is, the thing everybody really cares about, which is whether or not you get that white noise, that kind of waterfall sound due to air uh, going through the fins of the device. I'm going to shut off the motor so that the thing is coasting, and then you'll be able to hear just what the heat sink impeller interacting with the air sounds like on its own. Okay, so I'm doing that right now. We have uh, people like Daniel Matthew, who's our mechanical engineer, who's all about making sure that, you know, things really work the way they're supposed to. The modeling work that is a mathematical analysis that tells you sort of how this structure should be best designed and optimized is, you know, immense in its complexity. It's computational fluid dynamics very, very difficult, very non-intuitive. And so we have one person on our team, Trisha, who's dedicated to the CFD, or computational fluid dynamic work. So this is a, an initial step in the modeling phase. We're going to validate it against experimental data. In the end, our model will become a parametric study of optimization so that we can change the fin design, the fin length, the number of fins, so that we can optimize the impeller device to remove the most heat. The team is also looking at scaling up their technology for other applications, including solid-state lighting and even air conditioning. 
they've already had success with commercializing the Sandia cooler, hosting a recent industry day brought the attention of many people interested in quality cooling systems. We signed two license option agreements, one in the area of solid state lighting and one in the area of uh, electronics cooling, CPU cooling. I expect that we will, uh, based on, on the outcome of that industry day, is that we'll have uh, several more uh, license option agreements signed soon. I've been in this field throughout my PhD um, and I've never seen uh, such an innovative device and so it's really exciting to be a part of it. You really get to see an aha moment with people when they, they come to the lab, they see the technology, they actually see it working, see that it, it does what it's purported to do and it just, ah, oh, okay, I get it, it makes sense. Very simple, very elegant solution that can really have a profound impact uh, in a number of, uh, of technological areas.